and welcome back to Spartan's Finest. I'm going to be taking a look at a, another operation attack. I'm going to try to do I'm going to try to do one a day here, uh, but since we have four days of replays, uh, we're going to go back and look at uh, some of them from a couple days ago. So there you see us, 298. We'll surely be moving up even more uh, today. That 59% winning percentage, I want to kind of show you guys what, what that really entails here. If you look at our op history, and you can see there, we're doing mostly choke point. A uh, lot of 990s. Every once in a while, we do have a, a day where we don't quite make it. Um, but you can see there, even on those days, we're getting we're getting really high points. Uh, last video I did was the choke point in nine. Uh, the following one, this is one where we uh, didn't quite make it, but as you see there, we still made 902 points. And so that's still a lot of points to further us up the leaderboard. And so let's take a look at this one here. This was from three days ago. So here we go again. Tech Crunch. This was in the last video. Now this one, real, real tough. Those rockets, which are blanketing the beach, make this a hot landing. We'll go four times until the troops get out here. Smoke the landing. Now one thing, let me pause that. For those of you, do you see how the smokes kind of extend literally halfway into the water? That's literally what you're going to have to do to provide adequate adequate coverage for your girls or any troop and a little bit little bit of a gap there and you can see guys on on this and and Norris is a guy he doesn't doesn't run troop health uh, specifically so that he can, you know, put more into troop damage and GBE. Uh, now the flip side of that, of course, is uh, there's going to be uh, little margin for error, especially with the girls who don't, don't carry a lot of troop health uh, to begin with. So th this, this was going to be a monstrously tough solo anyway. The nice thing Norris has done, as you can see there, he has cleared the path. So the attacker who follows him um, is going to be able to take it down uh, when he hits. Dioxin, here we go. These are, uh, this is one of those bases where you can try for the solo, uh, and if you don't get it, the next guy probably can, or you can try to clear some defenses. There's, there's I don't know that one way is more right, more better than the other. Uh, I believe Jersey just goes for it here. Like I say, this is three days ago, so you'll pardon me if I don't totally remember every one of these attacks. Nice pathing there. Good, good spacing on those smokes. Literally perfect spacing on the smokes. We'll go back to one speed here. And then to hit this base there, 9 o'clock position, and then it's just really a matter of shocking and... Uh, yeah, now I believe Jer and Jer I think he acknowledged this one that he was he was just just a fraction of a second late with those shocks. And for those of you guys who are learning uh, higher level operations, learning the girls, learning the distance it takes for your smoke to travel, uh, that's just something that's going to come with experience. Now, as you see here, uh, the first time uh, Jersey went uh, all Zuka AZ, this time he's going to bring a boat of. Uh, let's zoom that down just a little bit. He's going to bring a boat of heavies with him. And, uh, yeah, slight little snafu there. Uh, like I said, guys, even us who are pretty, pretty advanced up in the game here, you know, it, it, there's no sure things. You know, little, little snafus can happen. Uh, so we're going to need a third hit here on Dioxin. As I said in the previous video, the ideal is if we don't spend more than two hits on any on any base. But sometimes you got you got a tough base, or maybe uh, there's a there's a suboptimal attack, and 
you know, sometimes you need to you need to do that third third hit. And this is Tian Bob. This is a solo of Complex, and this and he even loses. Look at that. He loses Brick, so he won't be able to use Battle Orders. Lost a couple more girls, but but uh, pretty darn impressive attack here. Once you see him, we'll get him up to the core there. Found a great position where he only needed to throw uh, one shock, I believe. And really gets a fine job done. I'm going to back this down to one, one speed so we can see here. Now, again, those of you learning the Elzuka technique, you've got to figure out when to throw your shocks on those rockets. And you see his gets there just perfect. Um... And I believe he even throws a second one. He found a position where he only needed one. Yeah, a couple got away, but still good timing on that. When in doubt, guys, if, if it's a question of throwing that shock one second early versus one second late, throw it a second early. If you throw it a second early, you'll still get nine seconds of your girls bombing down the core. If you throw it one second late, half your girls are going to get vaporized. Um, so that was a fabulous solo by T and Bob there. Because because we know we're going to need this extra hit by Bix on um, Dioxin, it was good that we could we could save every every solo in a ten man task force is is literally golden. Very very necessary. Now Bix, I'm actually going to slow this down to one one speed. This Bix is literally the master of the walking path on Dioxin here. Yeah, a couple stepped out there, but you'll see where he flared to that position right there by the boom cannons, and then the final positioning right there between the damage amp and that machine gun. And then once the girls are into position, you flare the core, and then it's just a matter of getting your shocks off. And as you can see there, uh, his shocks were uh, in place right as the smoke left off. Like I say, the ideal timing is simultaneous, but for those of you learning the Alzuka uh, troop combination, it is better to be a second early on your shocks than a second late. Okay, moving right along. Okay, next up is me. And as you see, we're burning, we're burning a lot of uh, sabotage. One because we have a massive crew of intel, just monsters, and the other is we were concerned that Callisto was a was a tough base. We were trying to lighten it up here. Now, because C Norris already uh, loosened up my path for me. It's a relatively easy finish for me here. Just going to get into position there about 930. Couple, uh, yeah, just one shot to get rid of that. And I think this cannon's picking off, yeah, picking off a few girls, but I, it wasn't worth the effort to reposition or anything. Uh, that was a quick takedown. I know I did that at four speed, but that was really, I mean, Chuck did all the prep work for me on that one, so that one was going to drop uh, nice and easy. Fingers up next with a solo of XL. And like I say, guys, we knew we were going to need a couple on Callisto, so this going down as a, as a solo is, again, very, very uh, valuable to the team. See him getting into position there. We'll go down to one speed for the actual kill part. There's the pattern you always need to do if you're doing a hookah attack. Smoke in the front first to expose the heavies. Draw all the fire. And then when the smoke lifts on the girls, they just start blasting away. All of the defenses are already targeting the heavies in the front. And down goes XL by fingers. Terrific attack there. Terrific attack. Next up is Callisto. A, a dual play with SD and Juicers. Very, very tough base. The positioning on where to place your troops will go two times speed to start. And now flaring up to an intermediate point. 
Throwing those smokes, keeping them covered. A lot of nasty defenses here. And uh, SD did something there. We'll talk about it after the attack. Let's go down to... Whoop, sorry about that. So you see where he positioned it. And then the... The... the uh, the shocks that follow here. Just watch this together. Each mortar has a little bit of a blind spot. And you know, SD nearly pulled this off. We knew this was going to probably be two attacks. Um, but by taking down more than half the core. He gave uh, Juicers a very, very reasonable task of, of finishing this off. So smoke walk, straight line, flaring up to an intermediate point, and then to that kill zone. girls peek out that was bound to happen and then shock 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 and then on to the core one hit and the second and that's all she wrote tough base uh, tough base that going down in two was a remarkable accomplishment by SD and juicers very well executed by those boys and finally blue water this base the layout is really, really tricky. It is the lowest point base, so we always save it for the end. That's kind of a strategy technique for those of you guys progressing in your ops. We will lock out the base with the lowest amount of force points. The reason we do that is if we get to a situation like we did here, we want to make sure we get all the bases that have the higher amount of points to climb us further up the leaderboard. And if we miss out on blue water, which we unfortunately did today, we're only going to miss out on no more than 94 points. Whereas if we had left Callisto, it had well over 200. And that would have been a lot less points climbing up the leaderboard for us. And as you can see here, it's it's a tough solo. You need a, you need a bunch of shocks. And because of that shield, you kind of need a second round of shocks. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that, that rocket, it just gets it there. Yeah. Close, very respectable attempt by Stump, but that, that's a big ask to solo that base. Um, but we still net it as a team, 902, and again, we saw some great attacks there. Okay, that's all for this one. Uh, next one coming up uh, soon.